Welcome back to Jamin's Daily. I've been leading these uh, episodes off by numbering them, so I'm like, welcome back to Jamin's Daily, episode 20 whatever. And I come to realize now, folks, that that's not a good idea because some of these episodes that I'm shooting, I don't, then I don't publish them in order. And so if I'm talking about episode 29, but then I ended up publishing it and it's going to be 30, then it's all messed up. So I think I'm going to start reframe. Uh, is it reframe? I'm going to refrain from saying the actual episode number. But just welcome back to another episode of Jamin's Daily. I'm your host, Jamin. And we're going to get right into some juicy topics uh, that you can find on the interwebs. And you can either search the internet all day or you can spend 30 minutes with me and we'll go over some of the the juiciest details on the internet. So we're going to start off with Jared Goff. He is a football player in the NFL. And I came across as I was looking for some show prep. I went to TMZ and they show they have a uh, let me pull it up so I can see it while I'm talking to you. Her name, the model, she's a model. Her name is Kristen Harper. Says, supports BF Jared Goff at home. Dot, 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 dot. Bikini time. All right? And then it's got this f- photo of her. Total thirst trap. Okay? She's in this uh, string bikini. And... It says, Jared Goff's smoking hot model girlfriend had the perfect setup to watch the LA Rams on Sunday, supporting her man in a bikini at home. And the one, what I want to talk about, folks, is how these athletes, I guess who cares? Jared Goff could care less. He's probably pretty happy that everybody knows his wife, his girlfriend is smoking hot, right? So good for him. But at the same time, there's like, there's no shame in anybody's game nowadays. It's, everything has to be, and I blame the Kardashians and people like that, all the Instagram models uh, for this. Because, you know, here we are, I, I'm, I'm half to blame because I'm over here talking about this girl on, this lady on my own podcast, but to try to highlight this phenomenon where some athlete has a girlfriend and granted she's probably popular she was i think a sports illustrated mod- swimsuit model before dating this guy so she had some kind of clout some fame but it's like this is your your boyfriend's day he's playing a football game and it's like hey let me let me you know, offer some clickbait of me in half naked. And sure enough, now it's on TMZ. And then sure enough, now we're talking about it on Jamin's Daily. And I, I just feel, I feel some type of way on how this whole, it's like uh, the circle of life of internet clickbait. Okay. There's like these progressions of how you get to clicking on this. Or like this whole, there should be a class. I bet you there's probably a business course now on how to become, how to create clickbait, what works best for clickbait. And I'll tell you what, good looking women in skimpy bikinis is great clickbait. And this one just happens to be a football player's girlfriend. And it just happened to be on TMZ today. I'm going to put the photo up there for all you guys who are, and ladies who are um, interested, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, but it just kind of, it just, I need you community followers, email me, and tell me if I'm way off base on the whole thirst trap, I've heard about this, the thirst trap, it's like, it's like a train wreck, you can't look away, and then like the link is like a magnet to your for your mouse and it's just like brains you can't fight it and click 
Anyways, guys, I'm kind of going to be struggling through this episode because I have a massive headache. I think I got it. I think my sinuses are inflamed because the dryer went out. So I took it apart. All the lint's all dusty and dirty. It's coming up. I think I inhaled some of that. I think it may be inflamed my sinus cavity or something because I got all this pressure right in here now. And my neck's giving me a little bit of headache. But you know what? The show must go on. Can't fall behind. I promised you a bunch of episodes this week. So I'm going to muscle through. On to the next topic. I read. I didn't read. I saw on TV as I'm getting ready for work. They were criticizing the news. Was criticizing. They had some anonymous sources. That um, Donald Trump yesterday got at, left the hospital to get in his little motorcade to go drive by all the greeters and supporters who were around Walter Reed uh, there, you know, just to support him. So he goes out there to show his gratitude. And in the news in the morning, all there was was a lot of, you know, what's the word, hate? A lot of backlash. Oh, how could he be doing this? He's putting all these people at risk. And then all of a sudden you get a breaking story from an anonymous source who claims to be within the secret service and apparently secret service members were upset because trump put them at risk which i thought from the jump was fake news because who in the heck i i wouldn't be maybe it was a retired secret service member who's all political and has an axe to grind maybe but i can't i cannot imagine you know, active Secret Service members, you telling me they have, that CNN has sources in the Secret Service who are then just going to bad ma throw Trump under the bus? I mean, this is their job. Their job is to protect Trump or to put their lives in jeopardy. Like, literally, they're supposed to take a bullet. And so I found an article on a former Secret Service member named Dan Emmett. And he was, I believe, um, he was Bill, a Bill Clinton Secret Service member. And he was saying how, you know, the agents' lives, Secret Service agents' lives are always in danger. It's just part of the job. And we're going to see what exactly he says. He goes, you know, he isn't, he, unlike others, isn't slamming President Trump for his hospital stunt saying danger is routine for agents. Okay? Coronavirus or not. And this guy, Dan Emmett, who spent 21 years in the Secret Service during the terms of George W.H. Bush, Bill Clinton, and then George W. Bush, he was on TMZ on Monday talking about the controversy Trump created by taking an SUV ride while having COVID-19 just to wave to his supporters. And Dan downplays the outrage and provides some insider perspective, telling us anytime the president is outside of the White House, there's serious risk to the agents on his detail. And Trump's not the first to add to it, strictly for PR purposes. According to Emmett, this is what signing this is what signing up for the Secret Service entails. Alright, so POTUS can do what he wants. And it's up to the agents to protect him. Dan even offers a famous example from the Clinton area, and according to this article, it's a fair point. So, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill Clinton used to like to go for runs in the morning. You know, do you think that's pretty? You know, here the, the the president of the United States wants to go for a jog in the morning, just around D.C. or some some areas. Don't you think the Secret Service are at a lot of risk to make sure that he can just go for a run? But like this guy says, hey, it's his prerogative. He's the president. He gets to do what he wants. And we just, it's our job to make sure he's safe while he's doing what he wants to do. And for what it's worth, it says the two agents who, did, who drove Trump around reportedly volunteered for the gig. Okay? They didn't force anybody to do anything. They're like, hey, Trump wants to go out and wave to, the, to his supporters. We need two agents to take them. And they volunteered. But if you listen to the news, it's like, oh no, Trump is this 
terrible person putting everybody at risk. Secret Service agent. They're, you know, they, they want you to be like, they're, they're, he's, he went to a children's hospital without a mask on or something. Give me, you know, putting everybody at risk. Give me a break. Moving on. This is what I found. This is, I found kind of interesting considering the whole, um, you know, inclusion, body positivity stuff that's going on, which is nice. Hey, let's, let's be inclusive and we shouldn't judge people so harshly based off of their appearance okay but i do find it somewhat interesting how people who are big at, at some time in their heart of hearts in many cases wish they weren't if they could lose weight they would and an example here i'm not saying she didn't want to always lose weight or that she was she was never really a big body positivity person anyways but rebel wilson the comedian nor she was on um that singing movie where they sing they're in some kind of glee or choir club can't remember what it's called and she was always heavy and now she's lost a gang of weight looks you know some would say better and she's like telling people hey i'm losing weight i've lost all this weight and people will support her but this rebel wilson she looks completely different and what i just so she says you know she's proud of herself she's lost all this weight but that goes you know you're supposed to feel the whole po uh, body positivity thing is you're supposed to feel that way regardless. You should just be proud, right? But then when she lose weight, you can still be proud. Which means, you know, being proud of something is supposed to mean something. If you're proud of anything just because, then I think we have that word wrong. Being positive. If you're really positive about being heavy, you wouldn't be bragging to everybody when you lose weight. There was a show on A&E, I don't even know if it's still on, but it was, you know, some crappy reality TV show following this girl who's big. I don't know how she got the job, because she wasn't, I don't think she was famous. She wasn't in a movie. She was just a cele uh, reality TV star. She's big. So I think it's called My Big Fat Happy Life or something like that. And if you watch the show, half of the show is about her struggles and her, you know, issues with her weight. And it's not a good thing. You know? So, folks at home, let me know how you feel about this, the body positivity, you know, we have plus size models, which are nice. I get what they say when they talk about just random commercials and things like that, where you have normal women with normal bodies. That's okay. But then when we're talking about high fashion, runway models, swimwear models and stuff, I mean, there is, nobody, one, an example that's made is that nobody, nobody talks about this for men. All the, you know, nobody wants to see, athlete, you know, the athletes and other type of male models. They're never, they don't have no beer guts, okay? They don't got a beer gut. They're not heavy. They're sculpted, okay? They're meatheads. Or they're tall and slender, okay? I, I think we have a lot of making up to do for the men, when it comes to body positivity. Maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should be a body positivity male model. And just take photos of myself being fat. With a beer, with a beer belly. And unshaven, unkept. Because hey, it's my body. I'm positive about it. And you know, maybe it'll go somewhere. Could happen. There's something that's going on, folks that I find odd because my parents were teachers my dad was a teacher my mom was within education I got a degree in education because I thought I wanted to be a teacher I taught for one year and I thought being a teacher was about like taking knowledge and then like passing it on and teaching people things because that's what you should do we should teach but now especially because of COVID and you, if you look on the internet there's all these protests. Teachers are like now activists. And maybe they've always been 
and I just wasn't aware of it. But there's this article about a protest in Los Angeles. A bunch of teachers. And what are they protesting? They're not protesting gang violence. They're not protesting um, maybe child abuse or substance abuse. No, you know what? They are protesting Jeff Bezos and Amazon. I'm thinking, how is that relevant to being a teacher? You know, shouldn't they be like working on their lesson plans? You know, grading papers? But no, they're out protesting Jeff Bezos because, you know, people, people over profits. That's the the mantra nowadays people over profits and it says a group of climate and labor activists have gathered in LA to protest Amazon and its founder Jeff Bezos so they lump them all in so it wasn't I guess just teachers but there is a tweet from the United Teachers of Los Angeles some union and it says corporate greed fuels the climate emergency we need a coalition of environmentalist workers and customers to fight back and that what this protest today represents so you know you can you can walk and chew gum at the same time so they can be teachers and protest at the same time you know but it just seems like it's a lot of expended energy teachers work a lot they're tired they should be at home you know resting not protesting But, you know, what do I know? Protest. It's free country. It says here that the protesters were marching to Bezos' house in Beverly Hills. And the the march was promoted earlier this week online with the tagline, The wrong Amazon is burning. And the protest comes just a little over a week before Amazon's popular Prime Day. How many, how many people, how much you want to bet that Almost every single person who was at this protest has purchased something on Amazon. I would venture to say that many of them probably have Prime memberships. They probably purchase things on the regular from Amazon. And then here they are protesting them. (laughs) You know, it's kind of the word hypocritical, perhaps. It says that the e-commerce giants are already having some bad publicity this week because they recently revealed that 20, 20, there was 20,000 cases of coronavirus among its labor force. Which sounds plausible, reason, reasonable. I mean, they have hundreds of thousands of employees, if not a million or, or more, when you call, call all these people who work through them, contractors, etc., and they never tell you. We talked about this in the last episode. Okay, 20,000 cases. How many of them died? I want to know. They don't say, oh, you know, three three employees died. You know, I bet you in, in any given time period, empl- uh, Amazon, because they have so many employees, employees die. There's car accidents. There are overdoses. There's all kinds of things. Okay, but they can't say, Oh, uh, five people who work for Amazon got coronavirus and died. Well, they got to use the big number, the 20,000. Because then it's like, wow, that's so many people. They must be doing something wrong. They're so evil. I don't know, man. Oh, nothing but hate. And you know, folks, this, I bet you this episode, you know, we've been getting last episode. And prior to that, another episode was rejected by Facebook for advertising so i can't boost the episode i can still post it but i can't boost it because it fits along line it fits along social uh anything that's social social issues elections campaigns politicians you can't talk about that and boost it unless you go through this huge um vetting process that i'm currently going through right now i'm almost through it but just talking about this this is a social issue amazon protesting probably will get rejected also because you can't talk about any of that and and not get flagged you know 
and I find it as I was doing the show prep, I, I find it harder and harder to find anything to talk about and that, that doesn't involve politics or social issues in some way. Which is sad because we talked about how you know everything is becoming political and that's a bad thing. And I'm now struggling to stay away from it because I, I don't really want to talk about it too much. I, I don't want my ads to get rejected. But, you know, I can't help myself, I guess. We're going to take our first break. I need a break. My head is pounding. So I'm going to take a quick break. But before we do, don't forget that this show, this podcast, Jamin's Daily, is sponsored by Sage Choice Insurance Agency. Full service independent insurance agency. We specialize in homeowners, auto insurance, business insurance. 12 years of experience. Give us a call at 361 400 2411. You can find us on Facebook. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're a customer, you and you and you love us. You know how you can show your love by sending us a referral. You can go to refer to jamin.com. Put in your name, put in the person you want to refer, submit it. We'll send you a $10 gift card, folks. So keep that in mind. When we get back, we are going to talk. We're going to have we're going to go to World Star, World Star and look some things up. Have a good time. So stick with us. Welcome back to Jamin's Daily. We're going to get right into it. I told you before the break, we were going to look at World Star, and I found two two cool videos that I felt were kind of funny and or entertaining that we could talk about. And one is of a New York police officer, and he's doing this video of himself giving a one-minute rant. And the title is "Former Police Officer Speaks About the Problem with Police Today." says they want to be call of duty so he's talking about how when he was in the nypd all he had was a revolver no no bulletproof vest he worked in all the um you know high crime areas and he never shot anybody and he says the reason why you have all this problems now because all these new police officers they they really want to be military guys they want to use you know they they got to have all their gear and they're just looking for action and i think the guy's an idiot that makes zero sense okay he's comparing what i know in the 80s and you know yeah new york was has a lot of high crime but have you seen the statistics lately a lot of high crime going on now and what does you know the problem is because back then the 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 perps didn't have the guns either this guy didn't shoot anybody because obviously I, I, I wish he would have talked about how many times he got shot at how many people he encountered who had a gun that's what's going on half the time with these cops out there nowadays they know that criminals in many cases are armed and they get shot at and they get shot so you know I criticize some of these cops sometimes because I feel as though sometimes they should be a little more courageous. You know what you sign up for when you become a cop? So the whole the whole mantra of like, well, they deserve to go home to their family. You know, they can't, they're not going to take any chances. Uh, you know, kind of, maybe, but you, you have to take some chances. You're a cop, okay? So you don't can't always just shoot first and ask questions later all right and then this fool talking about how you know police brutality alleged police brutality isn't like some new thing all of a sudden because of call of duty kids new cops younger cops nowadays they they all grew up on call of duty and they want to be military and all violent because they play call of duty give me a break people have been complaining about uh, police brutality for decades before there was ever Call of Duty. So what, what was what was the excuse then? You know? Super Mario Brothers? Zelda? Caused people to... Caused the cops to... Be, uh, you know, all amped up. And wanting... You know, always wanting smoke. Always wanting to... Get at get at somebody. Shoot. Shoot a motherfucker. No. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. He was... This is... I hate to say it, but this guy's a boomer. Okay? He's perfect boomer... 
the boomer, you know, okay boomer. This is okay boomer Webster dictionary. Jeez. The better clip, and I have to be careful on this one because people have strong feelings about um, how you punish your children and young children. I'm just going to say between the ages of you know, 10 and younger, maybe. Elementary school and younger. There's a video on the on world star of this man he he's uh, punishing disciplining disciplining his two boys and the, it looks like they're in some kind of lobby there's chairs around and the the video starts with the, the the father has a belt and he's holding on to one of the kids the kid can't be but six or seven years old maybe a little older maybe eight years old and he's spanking him. Boom, he's going after him. The kid's trying to move and like I used to do. All right, like, oh, oh you, you know, oh, oh, you pretend like you got hit even though you didn't. And so he's going to town. Boom, boom, boom. Then he grabs the other one and he's hitting him too. And what's the funniest thing about these about the internet is then the comments. So you, then you read the comments. And so it's kind of 50-50. Some people are like, yeah, that's a good dad. You know, they probably, they're not, oh, so the, the two boys were accused of stealing and so that's why the dad is getting after him and i'm sure the dad they either admitted to it or they got caught red-handed also because i don't think the dad's going to react like that if they were just accusations right he caught them stealing so he he was going to teach him a lesson about stealing all right if you steal again this is what's going to happen now that's probably exactly how my dad would have responded, but he probably would have waited till we got home. He would have told me. And that's the biggest punishment of them all. When you know it's coming, you can't do nothing about it. He's like, when we get home, I'm going to beat your ass. You're in so much trouble. can't believe you stole something. And then that 15, 20, 30, however long it took to get home... It's just on your mind. It's it's a form of torture. There's mental warfare there. You're like, oh my god, trying to find a way not to go home. Trying to find a way to stay there longer and and try to weasel your way out of it. You know, diplomacy, learning diplomacy at that younger age. Oh. But you know, folks, tell me at home because there's all kinds of research saying you, know, you can you can't spank your kids nowadays. It's not good for them. But you know. Spanking your children, disciplining your children is biblical, folks. You spare the rod, you spoil the child, okay? Let me know how you feel. Send me an email at jamensdaily, jamensdaily at gmail.com. Let me know. We're going to wrap up this episode at around 30 minutes because I thought I was going to muscle through this. I actually wanted to do another episode after this, but my neck is killing me. Just under the weather. I think I look a little pale and I'm sweating. Hope I'm not coming down with COVID. I actually think I had COVID in late late February. Because I had a fever. I had a, this is before everybody knew about COVID. But right as COVID was starting, I was meeting with some customers who frequent China. And I was like, you know... A foot away from them we're talking we're going over stuff right you know right next to each other and soon after a week or two later i get super sick like a dog high fever in bed for two days didn't have a lot of respiratory issues a little but not what people think covid is now you know you can't breathe and you die but had high fever chills and I just thought maybe I got a mild flu, you know, a quick flu. I was only sick for a couple days, three days, then I was done. But now I'm pretty positive it was COVID. So, you know, I can relate. Like, Trump, me and him, we know what's up. I had COVID. But now they say possibly you can get it again. You're not immune if you get it once. So... Kind of scaring myself now thinking about it, but I'll be all right. So, thanks for joining us, Jamin's Daily. Until next time, stick with us, because the best is yet to come.